Hi, One Hour Smart Home here, and today we're going to show you how to install a USB-C wall outlet or USB-C charging outlet. So what we've got here is an outlet that has two standard receptacles, and then you have a USB-C port here and a typical USB-A port here. And what the advantage of this is, is that you can charge your phones typically quicker with this than some of the charging bricks out there because this will actually provide 5.1 amps of charging and it is a higher capacity or smart charger. So you're gonna be able to use a standard phone charger cord like this, it's gonna plug right in there, or you can even use one of these newer Apple USB-C chargers. Now you can charge your Apple phone with this type of a cord, but a lot of the newer Apple laptops will actually also charge off this as well. So you no longer would need that power brick. You could plug it directly into this USB-C wall outlet. So let's go ahead and get started wiring up this USB-C outlet. So the very first thing that we need to do is confirm that the power is off at this existing outlet. Now there's two ways to do that. If this is on the same circuit breaker as a light fixture, you can turn on that light fixture with the light switch and then go down and turn the circuit breaker off at the panel and you can then confirm that the power is off when that light is no longer on. But that requires that you know that this is on the same circuit as your light switch, but you may not be able to confirm that. So your second option for confirming that there's no longer power to this particular device is to use a non-contact voltage meter like this and then go turn off the circuit breaker and confirm that the power is off. So I'm gonna turn this on and you're gonna see what happens when we put this next to the outlet. So you can see it's already beeping here. That means it's detecting power. And when we put it next to the outlet, it lights up and tells us that there is still live electrical current going through here. So let's go down to the circuit breaker and we're gonna cut off the power and test it again. And you're not going to get a reading from this non-contact voltage meter. So I cut the power off to this circuit at the circuit breaker. And now let's go ahead and test it again with the non-contact voltage meter and see if we get a reading. We do not get any kind of power reading. The lights are not lighting up here, indicating that there is power on this outlet anymore. So this is safe to work on. So using a non-contact voltage meter is a great way to confirm that the power is off. You could also do this with a multimeter as well, if you know how to use one of those with one of these outlets to confirm the power is off. So now that we've confirmed the power is off with the non-contact voltage meter, we're gonna go ahead and remove this cover plate from the existing outlet. Now, once you've taken the cover plate off, it's always a good idea just to check again with the non-contact voltage meter to make sure that we don't get any live current readings. And we are not getting any reading here. We're not getting any reading from the non-contact voltage meter. So we are good to go. And we're gonna go ahead and we're going to remove the two screws here that hold this outlet onto the junction box. Now that we have these two screws removed from the outlet that was holding it to the junction box, go ahead and pull the outlet out so that you can work on it a little bit easier. Now it's always a good idea to take a picture of the existing wiring, but a typical outlet will be wired with a neutral wire on one side and your hot wire on the other side. Now, sometimes you're going to have additional neutral wires connected because maybe they're connecting another outlet in the circuit and sometimes you'll have additional hot wires connected because maybe they'll be connected to other outlets in the same circuit as well. Now, the last wire we have here on this green terminal, this is the ground wire. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. So our white wire here is the neutral wire. Our black wire over here is the hot wire or line wire. And this unshielded wire with the green terminal, this is our ground wire. Sometimes this will be an insulated green wire as well to designate the ground. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to loosen up these terminals here and remove the existing wires. We've got our hot wire off. Now we're gonna go after our ground terminal and take that off. We have the ground wire removed. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to remove the neutral wire from the existing outlet. 
Now we've got all of our wires removed from the existing outlet and we're ready to install our USB-C outlet. Now this is a little bit different than the outlet we removed. There's not terminals on both sides. There's only terminals on one side. And what we need to do is look on the back here and we're going to see which terminal is hot and which terminal is the neutral. So it says that top terminal is the hot terminal right here. And then this bottom terminal is the neutral terminal or white wire terminal. So black is gonna go on the top terminal and on the bottom terminal, we're gonna put that white neutral wire. We're also gonna connect the ground stud, which is over here on the top. So we'll make sure we get that connected as well. So all we're gonna do now is just go ahead and take our wire loops and wire it up to these two terminals. So the first one that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my black wire here and I'm going to wire that up to this top terminal on the outlet. And you wanna make sure that you get this the right side up. So sometimes your wire loops aren't going to be rotated the correct direction. So what you need to do for that is just take some pliers and you can go ahead and rotate that. And it's going to rotate that wire loop right around so that we can then connect it to this existing terminal. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get that on there. And now we've got our hot wire connected to the terminal and we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna tighten that down. So now we're going to take our neutral wire and connect it to the bottom neutral wire on the new USB-C outlet. So we're just gonna go ahead, put it in there, get it around that terminal, and then now we're going to secure this as well to the outlet. So we've got both of these terminals secured, both our hot wire and our neutral wire, all we've got left now is the ground wire. So we're gonna take the ground wire and we're going to loop it around this ground terminal down here at the bottom. Now we've got our ground wire attached. Let's go ahead and secure this. All right, now we have all of our wires connected. We've got our neutral wire on the neutral terminal, we've got our hot wire on the hot terminal, and we have our ground wire connected. So one thing I like to do before I put this in the electrical junction box is go ahead and cover up these terminals with a wrap or two of electrical tape, which just prevents if there's any other wires in here, something from touching one of these terminals and potentially shorting out. So let's go ahead and do that now. We take our electrical tape and we're just gonna wrap it around the terminals here. So now we're ready to go ahead and put this in the junction box. Also, you wanna make sure that you don't cover up any of the vents here on the back of this with the electrical tape. So we're good here. We didn't cover up any of the vents and we are gonna go ahead and now reinstall this in the junction box. So we just push the outlet in and now we are ready to secure this and screw it into the junction box. Let's make sure we get our screws aligned here. Now we've got the outlet installed into the junction box. Let's just go ahead and we're going to reinstall the cover plate here. So we'll put these two screws in and then secure that to the junction box and outlet. All right, now we have this USB-C wall charging outlet installed. So we're gonna go ahead and restore the power to this by turning the circuit breaker on, then plug a couple things in and let's see if they charge. All right, the power has been restored at the circuit breaker. So let's go ahead, we're gonna plug in a charging cable here and then we're going to go ahead and plug in a cable to this phone and let's see if we get charging. And you can see that it is now charging. We've got the little green or red light up there and this is currently charging. So we are good to go here with this particular outlet. And let's go ahead and try out the USB-C side of the outlet right here. So we're plugging that in and then let's plug in the other end of the cord to the phone and let's see if we get charging with this one. So now we are getting charging again. The little light pops up there. It does say down here, fast charging. So with a typical wall outlet, I don't always get the fast charging, 
But now that I've got this with the 5.1 amps with the USB-C, I will get a little bit faster charging with my phone. And like I said before, you can even charge up some other Apple devices like computers using this in-wall outlet and charger. And what's nice about it is that you still have the two typical receptacles if you wanna plug something else in. So thank you for watching this video on how to install a USB-C style charger. And actually it does have a standard USB charger as well and an in-wall outlet. So far, I've been really happy having these in my home with the flexibility for both the USB-C or the standard USB cable and having two additional outlets. Having one of these in an area like a kitchen or an office really does add a lot of functionality and flexibility for when you're charging your electronics. So please give me that thumbs up, subscribe, click any of the links below if you wanna support us, and we will also include a link to this particular type of in-wall charger in the links below. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.